Today, boys and girls, I shall read The Diary of a Killer Cat by Anne Fine. Okay, okay. So, hang me. I killed the bird. For pity's sake, I'm a cat. It's practically my job to go creeping round the garden after sweet little incy weensy birdie pies that can hardly fly from one hedge to another. So, what am I supposed to do when one of the poor feathery little flutter balls just about throws itself into my mouth? I mean, it practically landed on my paws. It could have hurt me. Okay, okay. So, I biffed it. Is that any reason for Ellie to cry in my fur so hard I almost drown? And squeeze me so hard I almost choke? Hello boys and girls, this is the masked ladybird here and I'm going to read a book written by Julia Donaldson called What the Ladybird Heard. This book was illustrated by Lydia Monks. Once upon a farm lived a fat red hen, a duck in a pond and a goose in a pen, a woolly sheep and a hairy hog, a handsome horse and a dainty dog, a cat that meowed and a cat that purred, and a fine prize cow and a ladybird. And the cow said moo, and the hen said cluck, hiss said the goose, and quack said the duck. Nay, said the horse, oink said the hog, baa said the sheep, and woof said the dog. One cat meowed, and the other one purred, and the ladybird said never a word. Today, boys and girls, I'm going to read Owl Babies by Martin Waddle. Once there were three baby owls, Sarah and Percy and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it. It was their house. One night, they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mummy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. The baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. To get us our food, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. But the owl mother didn't come. The baby owls came out of the house and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy and an old bit of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. It was dark in the wood and they had to be brave for things moved all around them. She'll bring us nice, mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mummy, said Bill. They sat and they thought. All I will think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham Mid-December, Mole and Rat are travelling back from one of their many journeys when they come across a human town. They take a shortcut through a human village and look through windows to see a number of sweet, happy scenes. People sewing, families eating, laughter, children sleeping, they feel even more drawn towards home, so hurry their pace to escape the winter weather more quickly. Once beyond the village, though, Mole feels a familiar sense creep over him. Listening to his inner voice, he realises that they are just minutes away from his old home, the one he left behind so long before. Mole calls out to Rat, who is too far ahead to understand him. Feeling ignored and upset, Mole follows, unwilling to simply desert his friend. However, his feelings eventually overpower him, so that he sits and cries. 
Rat finally notices Mole's pain and walks back to ask about it. After some blubbering, Mole explains that he wants to visit his old home. Though he initially thinks it a poor idea, Rat realises what the detour means to Mole, and they wander until they find the home. Inside, Mole is ashamed of his humble dwelling, but Rat praises the home for its charm and efficiency. Some caroling field mice stop by, and Rat is able to scrape together a feast for everyone from Mole's cupboards. That night, when they go to bed, Mole is happy to spend a night in his old home, but is glad to have a new life elsewhere. Today I'm going to be reading a passage from a wonderful book. I wonder if you could guess what the book is. The effect that medicine number two had on this chicken was not quite the same as the effect produced by medicine number one. But it was very interesting. Whoosh! shrieked the chicken, and it shot six feet up in the air and came down again. Then sparks came flying out of its beak, bright yellow sparks of fire, as though someone was sharpening a knife on a grindstone inside its tummy. Then its legs began to grow longer. Its body stayed the same size, but the two thin yellow legs got longer and longer and longer and longer still. What's happening to it? cried Mr Killy Cranky. Something's gone wrong, George said.